Hi, everyone. Welcome to this virtual village of women gathered here from all over the world as a means to share their story uh, with each other through storytelling. Um, the hope is that these stories inspire you and guide you in your own journey. I'm Bibi Lorenzetti, and I am here with Aura Bermudez. Is that how you say your last name? Yes. Yep. I almost forgot. <laughs> and uh, Aura <laughs> is a dear friend, and she's a uh, therapist. She's a yoga teacher or psychologist, yoga teacher, and an Ayurvedic um, practitioner of sorts. Health um, counselor. Health counselor. Uh, so yeah. I will let Aura introduce herself best. Um, take us a little bit through your journey of where you're from and how you became into, you know, how you came to wear all these different hats in your journey up to now. So I'm originally from Panama and I grew up and I went to school in Panama until I left for college. And then I just, I went back and um, I met my husband in Panama and we opened up a yoga studio together in 2014 and then life took us to Cambridge, which is where we're at right now. And when we moved to Cambridge, I was actually um, eight weeks pregnant. And that's when my whole Ayurvedic journey started. So oh, it's okay. so so it, there's like a, a mixture of everything happening here. Um, we ebb and flow from Panama to South Korea to Cambridge. We move around a lot. Um, and that brings a lot of like instability in our lives that thankfully, because of like the Ayurveda and the yoga, like I have my little toolkit with me all the time and that's been really great. Um, so I'm a yoga instructor. I teach uh, private group, I, I teach private one-on-ones and private groups through Zoom. I have um, an online Ayurveda school as well, um, tailored to the Spanish speaking market specifically because I feel like there's a lot of like English content out there. Um, and I just started teaching at a studio here in Harvard Square, and I'm super, super, super happy about that. Mm -hmm. So it's been, my son is now four, and it's been three years is exactly what it took me to go back to my normal life. Mm -hmm. So I am here to tell my story. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited to hear it. I feel like you were such a, an inspiration on my own journey. I remember when you were here, um, thank you. So thank you. So I'm a little bit curious to go back to the toolkit that you were talking about while you were yeah. moving and pregnant. What was that toolkit? So to be honest, at first I didn't have it. Like I thought I had it, and then I had, <laughs> and then I was pregnant, right? Like so, I had my my studio open in 2014, and it also had like this vegan cafeteria on the side. I was very vegan, like very vegan, very all about like the green juices and the cold pressing and using cashews to do every, every, every base of everything that I was going to eat. <laughs> um, and then, so we, we kept our business open and we were like, oh, my, my husband was doing a master's here at Harvard. And he was like, oh, you can go totally go back and forth. We're going to figure it out. It's just going to be a year and a half. And then that year and a half turned into like this whole like green card situation kind of thing for him. Mm. So we ended up not, not going back as soon as we thought. And in the meantime, while I was pregnant, the going back and forth was just not sustainable. Like after you throw up the first time in an airport, in a, in a airplane bathroom, you're like, no, like, no, <laughs> this is not, I'm not doing this again. So there was a lot of that, but the most importantly regarding the, the, like the toolbox, um, I thought that I was coming with, with like this super healthy approach to, to my diet and my lifestyle. But when I got pregnant, I had this severe aversion to anything that was healthy. <laughs> like I, I couldn't drink a green juice. I couldn't do a salad. Like it was awful. And uh -huh. as soon as I found out that like, I, I, I noticed this, the shift in my body super fast. I got nauseous mm. super fast. I got annoyed super fast. I got tired super fast. And so as soon as I found out I was pregnant, um, which is a very interesting story. <laughs> And I'll tell you in a second, um, mm -hmm. I called my husband and I was like, hey, he was here. I was in Panama. I was visiting my business and I was like, hey, I'm pregnant. And he's like, oh, my God. He started crying on the phone. He's like, I can't believe it. He went out. He celebrated. And he's like, I'll pick you up at the airport tomorrow. Like, what do you want? And I was like, find the best burger you can find in the whole Boston area. I need 
cow meat now <laughs> <laughs> and put some cheese on that. And he was like, what? Like, so immediately, like everything, like my whole world was upside down. I was like, what is this? And then my body was craving all these things, but my spiritual heart was like, what are you doing, girl? Like you're feeling, feeding a new, a new soul. Like there's a baby growing inside of you. And you're supposed to be doing everything that you already know. And you're doing like the opposite. But there was something clean, like something resonating in my, in my mind that I kept saying like, just go with whatever you feel like you can hold down, mm. right? Because I was throwing up so, so much. Mm. So, so yeah. And, and regarding like the way I found out, it's very interesting because it was during my yoga practice. Like, so I flew back to Panama because Day, who is one of my Ashtanga teachers, was flying that weekend for like a weekend intensive. And of course I wanted to be there and put my, my head, my leg behind my head and do the whole <laughs> intense stuff that we like to do. And by like, Surya Namaskara B, my heart B was like super racing. Mm. I was like, oh my God, I'm so tired. And I thought it was because I hadn't had breakfast and whatever, but I always practice without breakfast, right? And then my, my, my close group and they, they started approaching me and they were like, when was the last time you had your period? And I was like, hmm, I don't know. That's very interesting because I've been moving like my you know, I've been like all over the place in boxes. I haven't noticed. Let me check my phone. And when I checked my phone, I was like 12 days late and I was super <laughs> pregnant. They went to the pharmacy next door. They bought me a pregnancy test and they were like, just go pee in the stick. And I came out <laughs> of the bathroom and I was like, I'm super pregnant. Like there's, Aww. I'm super pregnant. So, so let me ask you this. Were you, plan like, were you one of those women that wanted to be a mother? No. Okay. So you had no plans of that. Mm -mm. So that when we found, a shock. yeah, because when we when we found out that my husband um, got into to school, and we had our business, we were like, okay, we are gonna have to fly back and forth, and we're gonna eventually move back, and let's just take this little break and kind of like live life and be free of our parents and of our friends and just start like this new thing. So we were kind of excited, and I wanted to mm -hmm. go back to school as well. I wanted to like maybe do my licensing as a psychologist here, and that would take like two years. And we wanted to go back to school. We wanted to be like. You know, like we were out and about, we come back home at whatever time we want. And so it was, there was a mixture of like, I don't want to use the word disappointment because yeah, it's not like I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm It was a shock. Mm -hmm. It was like, wait, what? This wasn't mm -hmm. in my plans. And I'm a Taurus. And I'm a very, if you know Ayurveda, I'm a very Pita Bragarty person. Like I'm super like organized, like routine kind of thing. And this completely like, pull the rug under my feet like it was like I was upside down so in that sense no and I was a former first grade teacher for over 12 years oh I didn't know that and yeah so the reason why I actually quit was because I I took <clears throat> I took a lot of my emotions from my kids home mm. and I worked in 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 very in, in a very privileged area of, of Panama in in private schools um where I, I, I had like kids that had everything, right? Mm. But even though they had everything, they, they had a lot of um, mommy and daddy issues or I, the last, the, the, what tipped me over completely was that I had a kid who, whose father was um, physically abusing his older brother. Mm. Um, so the kid came over in circle time and he told me the story and I, he, he just blurted it out. He's like, you know what? Like my daddy yesterday did this, this, this to my, to my, my brother. And he's not in school today. But they, my mommy said that he was actually sick. There was this whole story. And I was like, mm -hmm. what is happening here? So I called the school psychologist and I told her like, this is happening. And I broke down. Like, I mm -hmm. like I'm, I'm getting like goosebumps right now. I completely broke down. I was like, I, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like I would, I would go home and cry all the time because I was like, I can't believe this kid is going through like a divorce. And I can't believe like, like his parent, his father is moving to London and his mom is staying here with the kid. And he won't, mm -hmm. he only, he will only see his father like twice a, a, a year. So all of that really started affecting me. And not only did I quit my job and I like went into yoga and like did like a lot of like social work after that, but I set a point. I was like, I don't think I want to have kids. If this hurts me so much with a complete stranger, can you imagine how hard it's going to be for me? If, like my kid is bullied in school or like if something happens to him and, 
and life is so interesting in that way because my son was born with a medical condition mm. and it actually made me super strong yeah, right I was gonna say like I feel like yeah. whenever you're with other kids you don't have that insane strength that is just born out of love when you're a mom I mean I'm still in awe of that every day just the things yeah. that we do yeah 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 so so you so had that as a background and there you were pregnant <laughs> thinking exactly. great um mm-hmm. but so how so then I feel like also just going back to your story of like um the 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 fact that you had to change from this really pure diet very spiritually aligned to just accepting that your body was craving very opposite of that and it was against mm-hmm. your plan I feel like that's such a great learning for so many of us of just like from the beginning it's like it doesn't matter what your plan is you got to surrender here you know and it's like from the beginning we get these opportunities to change you know to like really surrender to I mean I kind of hate using the word surrender but just to see what is in front of us and like do it yeah have the courage to do it yeah and and you know what Bibi it wasn't easy and Mm -hmm. I actually I I looked for help regarding like that specifically um I've always been into like acupuncture because of the ashtanga Mm -hmm. practice like it's been so intense in my body that acupuncture always um brought a lot of relief so so I found out I was pregnant in Panama. Then I traveled the next day back to Boston. And as soon as I got in and I ate the burger, I was like, okay, I need, I need like some kind of support. And I looked for acupuncture and I found this amazing like little witch doctor woman who had everything that I needed and the plus. Like she lived, she, like she had her clinic, which, which was inside her home, a block and a half away from my home. Perfect. And that was like, <laughs> Oh my God, this is perfect. (laughs) So with her, I had the opportunity of like making a plan, taking it Mm. step by step and being super open about like what I was feeling. So the first Mm. goal was to take me um, all the way down to the, uh, with the first trimester, because Mm. I think it's fair to say that at the moment I found out I was pregnant, like vomit came out, came out of my mouth like I like my body was like oh now you know like this is what's happening mm. right like this is where like you've been feeling nauseous like you've been you've been like it's not because you moved it's not the anxiety of moving it's not the anxiety of traveling oh now that you know let me react and the body was like well oh, immediately and from that moment on like everything made me super nauseous like I, mm. I had a rough rough time so when I see when I meet Wendy she's like well it should be over by week like 12 13 14 more or less so I'm going to do a little bit of acupuncture and relieve you from that. But in the meantime, just eat whatever you can hold in. Like, and then we started in the whole, like you're, there's a soul, a new soul inside of you. You're sharing a body. There's like that, that soul has its own things that it likes that, you know, like you're going to have to make peace with that because you guys are sharing a body and it's going to be very hard for you not to feel selfish in your mind being like, but I really want my green juice because it's going to be, you know, like you're sharing that space. So, so she guided me through that whole process. And then week 14 came along and I went to her right before I had my ultrasound and she was like, how are you feeling? And I was like, I'm, I, I'm worse. Like it's, it's not getting better. <laughs> like I'm super nauseous. It's awful. And then she's like, um, do you want to know what you're having? And, and I say, definitely, like, actually, my appointment is this afternoon. And she's like, do you know what you're having? And I was like, well, I have this feeling that I'm having a boy. And she takes my pulse. And she's like, well, it's definitely a boy. And then we went to the ultrasound in the afternoon, and it was a boy. And, <laughs> and so the whole, like, okay, it's a boy. It's, like, different from being a girl. Like, there's boy things happening in your body. Like, everything is so different. Like, <laughs> it's normal what you're feeling. So I got a lot of support from her in that, in that way. And then after week 14, I, she gave me like, she told me things like drink dandelion tea first thing in the morning, push like the excess mucus down, and then you Mm. won't feel like you want to throw up. And then I would, I could actually hold down like orange juice, grapefruit juice, um, cucumber juice, things like that. Mm. I still Mm -hmm. couldn't hold like a full on like beet juice or like a super green juice with kale, but I could hold down, like hold down eight ounces of something liquid at least. Mm. So things started shifting a little bit. 
<laughs> I started feeling a little bit better, but I really, I, I, I looked for help. That was, that's the bottom yeah. line of it all. I didn't do it by myself. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's also such a great thing for everybody to hear. That's like, we're not supposed, we know we like inwardly know everything, but we, it's often good to have an external mentor to help us kind of get that wisdom out and, and make it, you know, manifest the right way. Um, and it's mm -hmm. so good to hear, like, you know, to hear you say that it was, that there was some resistance to it and there was some fear around it, but that you like took it head on and was like, okay, I'm going to need help with this. Cause I feel like that's such an intertwined or like such a big part of also labor, you know, mm -hmm. of like facing your fears, like, admitting them and seeking help if you need the help. So that's great. Mm -hmm. So then yeah. second trimester was better. And then what, then how do we proceed? Second not, trimester was, was not, not better. better. Okay. Was I, not better. <laughs> no, I threw up all the way until week 34. Ugh. God. At least three times a day, at least. Wow. It was bad. I okay. ended up in the hospital twice because I was like, yeah, I, I needed fluids. Like I couldn't hold anything down. Wow. The only okay. things that I could hold down were burgers and pasta. <laughs> so 50 pounds later, I gave birth. <laughs> right? So 50 pounds so, yeah. later. 50 pounds later. I gave birth. So second trimester wasn't that easy. What was easy mm. about the second trimester was that I wasn't feeling so lethargic anymore. Like I was, I, I could, you know, like sustain my practice. I could, I could do my practice. Um, I mean, it was super slow, but it was still a shanga, right? And it was still from beginning to end. And there was still dropping back and there was still a lot of that, but I was just so nauseous. And I had so much acidity and so much like reflux happening. I was so annoyed by that. And then there was this like lingering feeling that I remember popped in the second trimester because in the second trimester, I, I already had a belly, right? Like you, you're already like feeling the extra weight. You're already like, things are weird. Baby's moving, you know, like things start to shift, like really shift, like it's mm -hmm. real. Um, and I, I remember in the second trimester that it was the moment where I started having this super crazy intense dreams. I don't know mm. if that happened to you. Like they were super intense. Like there was so many things involved in these dreams. They, sometimes they were very sexual. Yeah, sometimes they were very, <laughs> yeah. And they were crazy, <laughs> right? So, so with, with those dreams came a lot of like, I would wake up like super like, Whoa. like, mm. like what just happened? And then in that moment that I would wake up like startled, I would like hold onto the belly and be like, oh, I'm pregnant. Like there was this constant reminder in the mornings of like, oh, I'm pregnant. And, it, and I'm going to be super honest because that's what we're here for. It wasn't a reminder like, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm so happy. I'm going to sing the baby in my <laughs> belly. It was like, oh, I'm pregnant. Right. There was like, re, re, yeah. oh, now I remember like, and in the second trimester came, the second trimester came with a lot of fear. It came mm. a lot of like what's gonna happen in the in, during mm. labor, and I am a very. I'm not gonna say I am gonna say use the word fearful because I am very fearful. I'm like I have like fear of heights, like you know, like I'm not that very risky person who's gonna be like, oh, let's go bungee jumping and let's go do this and that, because I have a a, a really big fear of pain. Mm. Um, I don't like to feel pain. I don't know if it's related to like, I had accidents when I was growing, like when I was like four or five years old, I don't know if it's related to that. I don't, I don't really remember feeling pain in that moment, but I know that the accident was really hard for it. Yeah. Yes. So, so I think that there's a little bit of that happening, but I just had so much fear of feeling pain during labor. Mm. Like I didn't want to feel pain. So I didn't immediately engage with that. Like, Oh, I'm not, I'm going without the epidural kind of thing. I was more like, mm. how do we make it safe so I can be like completely asleep and not feel anything? <laughs> right? Well, it's good um, that you had your very clear idea, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did. Yeah, I did. And again, like I looked, for, I I seeked help. I was like, I'm gonna need a doula. I'm gonna need like someone to cook for me, like because I knew that I am not like one to like pick up and go. Like if I'm, if I'm in pain or if I'm healing, like I'm the one who's going to like lay on the bed and be like, please don't touch me until things get better. 
<laughs> and then I'll let you know when I'm ready to stand up kind of thing. So, so I did seek for a lot of help. Like I researched like food companies that would bring you meals. And mm. I ended up not doing many of those things because I, then I made a plan with like my mom and my husband and he took some time off and all of that. Um, but I did keep the doula. I did keep the doula. Oh, so you did have a doula. I didn't remember I did that have a doula. part. Yeah, I did have a doula. Um, I interviewed a couple and I ended up with one and she was good. My labor was really long and we'll get to that, but she was good, but my labor was too long. And then she flaked. She kind of like, she was tired. Interesting. Okay. Yes. So then my mom ended up like powering up, like receiving the baby. When I wow. Her. So this is pre-pandemic world. <laughs> yes. Pre-pandemic world. Yeah. 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 Where no, you we could were leave and someone else could come in the room. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and even compared, like, so I gave birth um, in Boston, in Beth Israel um, hospital with an amazing team of doctors. Like my experience was superb (laughs) especially from what my mind had tricked me into believing that it was Mm -hmm. so I was coming from a reference of like my friends in Panama actually being like inside the room when they were in labor and things like that but the experience was always like okay she's about to start pushing so you guys need to get out and we're gonna take her to like an Mm -hmm. like an like an OR right like they they actually take the woman to an OR so And there was a lot of like the baby, the baby wouldn't stay in the room. Um, there was a lot of like that super retro kind of. Yeah, like the 15 is in America. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I had a lot of fear with that. Like from, from the experience that my friends had told me from what I had lived with them, I had a lot of fear of that. So mm-hmm. in that fear, I made a plan. And then that's where things started to like align themselves. So I won't go into that unless we want to talk about something else before. It's fine. We can circle back. You can keep going. Okay. Um, so, so I made this plan of like taking the doula and with her, she encouraged me to have a plan A and plan B. Plan A was like, hold on to the pain as much as possible. No epidural until I ask for it. My husband stays in the room at all times. My mom, my mom gets kicked out of the room if she gets to be too motherly, like too, in, too, too intense mm-hmm. in that way, like to like, oh, save her or try to do this, try to do that. Or she was, she was to be kicked out of the room if that started. Mm-hmm. Um, like I didn't want any of that happening. Mm-hmm. And I gave, do, uh, I gave my husband duly full permission with like signed papers and everything to make all the decisions that he needed to make from the get go. Mm-hmm. I was like, the only decision that I make is the moment where I want the epidural. Everything else, please ask you duly. Like, please, like circumcision or like she's dying, she needs to get intubated or like we're moving him, we're moving her from room or should we put her, her in the water? Like, please ask him. And he will very quietly and very nicely ask this bull of a woman <laughs> what, he, what she wants. So, so we had that plan. And then plan B was like, if... If I had to go into a C-section, I wanted like this, the screen, like the translucent screen. I wanted like, um, uh, I wanted him on my chest immediately, of yeah. course. I wanted to delay any, any vaccine that was unnecessary. Um, <clears throat> so I had a plan. Mm-hmm. And, and the plan worked. The plan definitely okay. worked. Um, so... So going back to my little witch doctor, which I yeah. saw once or even twice a week during my whole pregnancy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, she, so when I was getting to like the, the, the end of it, the end of the, the pregnancy, <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm super like done with this. I really yeah. need to get this baby out. And she's so, she's so amazing. Like, I, I really feel like she, the whole world needs to, needs to meet her. She, she's so amazing. Like she knows so well, like the, the, the woman's body and she's so intuitive. Like she's literally like a little witch. She told me like, she started like touching the belly and she was like, well, your baby is like super, like fully grown. Your body, your, your blood is flowing really well in your body. Like everything seems to be going really well. And he's actually super low and he's like ready. Like his, his head was down. Right he was, yeah. He was like in the right position. How far away like, from the do whatever the supposed so birthday this was, was that? 
this was week 37. Okay. And this was around April 18th, more or less. Okay. So according to the doctors, my week 40th was like around May 7th, May 9th. Um, so this was like April 18th, more or less. And I know more or less because my birthday is April 22nd. So I knew that I had told my mother that, she, that I, would, I would like for her to come after my birthday so I could spend my last birthday as a one being one and um, a half. with my husband. <laughs> one and a half, but it was just me and my husband. And then she could come on the 24th, which was a Sunday. And yeah, it was a Monday, Monday the 24th. So I go into, into my little witch on the 18th and I tell her like, I feel super ready. And she's like, well, the baby's down. Like he's super down, but you're like, you're only on week 37. We, like you still have a couple of more weeks to go, but he's super down. Like your blood is flowing super well. Like your body temperature seems like everything seems really well. She's like, I've never done this with you, but can I read your cards? And I was like, yes, bring them all out. So she brought like these angel cards and she started opening and she goes like, oh, 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 she started like making noise and she's like, when is your mom coming? And I was like on the 24th. She's like, ah, you might want her to come earlier. And I was like, why? And she's like, well, you told me that she's going to like get the, the baby stuff ready. She's going to like wash the, the clothes and everything. Like, so you need your stuff ready. And I was like, yeah, but she's coming on the 24th. Like we still have like two more weeks to get ready. She's like, nope, your baby's coming before that. And she's like, and this is what's going to happen. Your water is gonna, like you're gonna start leaking and but your water is not gonna fully break but you're gonna start like leaking and you're gonna get scared because you've been told that if you start leaking you have to go to the hospital. So you're gonna make your way to the hospital and it's gonna be April 26th. And I was like, okay. And she's like, you're gonna go there like early morning like 10 a.m. or less. Wow, gonna she keep told you like a, a whole story. She told me the whole story. Wow. She was like, you're gonna be there for a while. They're going to make, like, they're going to run tests. They're going to see everything. You're going to have contractions, but they're going to be too far apart, so they're going to send you back home. You're going to suffer that night, but you're going to have to pull through because they won't admit you until your contractions are, like, a minute and a half apart or something like that. I don't even remember. Probably, like, five and minutes apart. Be because, again, Dooley was in charge of all of that. <laughs> like, he was in charge of the app. He was in charge of the timing. <laughs> like, I just had to suffer. <laughs> so, so, I... If, just like she said, it happened. 26 in the morning, wow. I wake up. My mom was already there. So I called my mom. She came on the 24th. Um, she came on the 23rd. So she's there. She's watching. And I wake up on the 26th. I walk downstairs and I'm like, oh, making breakfast. And I was like, oh, oh. we had had the, the, the night before. So re remember, I'm, I live in Cambridge. So it's cold here until like June. <laughs> we have like eight months of winter. <laughs> we had walked the night before to a new ice cream shop that had opened. And of course I was pregnant. So I asked for a vanilla malted ice cream with like a cone and it was still cold outside. So when I started walking back and the, the ice cream was cold, my belly was kind of cold. It was cold outside. I started getting like cramps, like on my belly. Like it started like cramping what I thought were cramps, right? Mm -hmm. I, I had never given birth before. So I had no idea what was happening. And I was like, oh, maybe the ice cream was a little bit too much, whatever. And I remember stopping in a corner, like two blocks away from my home and grabbing onto a to a trash can and I was like oh like oh my god like this ice cream is like really doing it. <laughs> <laughs> something inside I mean like this is weird this but it's not like a stomach ache <laughs> so I ended up walking the next two blocks home and I was like I'm going to bed I, I lay down I, I fall asleep wake up the next morning still feeling a little crampy but nothing like as hardcore I walk down I have breakfast go to the living room I sit down and I looked down and I noticed that my PJs were wet. And mm. I was like, hmm. But I was already into like peeing in my pants kind of mode already, you know, <laughs> like the coughing and the belly and the thing and the bladder. So I was like, yeah, maybe it happened again. But when I go into the bathroom and I actually sit down, there was like, took, took, mm. took, right? There was water leaking. So I was like, oh, it's happening. So we, we went to the, to the hospital and everything happened just like Wendy said. So mm. they sent me back. I spent the roughest night in the freaking world. <laughs> and by like 5 a.m., I was already like just like biting onto the pillow. And I was like, no, we're going back to the hospital. I remember the ride to the hospital. Um, the Uber, he was so nervous, the Uber driver. We didn't have a car back then. And the Uber driver, he was so nervous because he was like, oh my God, is she giving birth? Like what's happening? I was like, no, 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 we still have time, but 
you need to miss every like hole, hole on the road. Like, please do not fall in any hole on the road because it's awful. Like I could feel like, a, ah, ah, mm. ah. so we make it to the hospital at like 6 a.m. on the 27th. I ended up giving birth at 9.47 p.m. Oh, so in whole, and then, okay, so you were a whole day. Yeah. So in whole, I spent like 36 hours in labor, yeah. which made it like super hardcore. But I asked for my epidural around like 3 p.m. Okay. 3 or 4 p.m. And I was like, I, I can't, I just can't walk the hall anymore. I can't like do the ball anymore. Like I need But that's great. Else. So even though you had the fear and even though you really didn't want to feel pain and you were saying that you um yeah there was this fear of pain you still handled most of the labor without any medication and again I think that the, that's the toolkit that's part of all of that like the doula the dooley my doula and my husband <laughs> the doula, they, they empowered me they and they, they you know like there was essential oils involved and there was a lot of massaging involved yeah. so yeah there was torture in those contractions but there was also a lot of peace in between right mm -hmm. there was also a lot of like that like comfort and love and all of that and and I mean I mean as much as we're ready to like ease the pain I was also not ready to let go of all of that process I was like mm -hmm. I was being pampered right <laughs> I was being super pampered and I also knew that the moment they would put the epidural I wasn't going to be allowed to walk as much yeah so I didn't want to be constrained to a bed and what really pushed me to the epidural wasn't as the pain as much as it was that I was super tired yeah. I hadn't Which had happens any often yeah yeah so I got the epidural and I slept for like four hours yeah fully like fully slept mm -hmm. we had a little scare like when I woke up you I, I think you had you had an epidural as well right mm -hmm. you yeah. know that they sh they shift you right yeah, they from help side you to side. shift it's so amazing the way they do it. They like hold you with towels and they just like flip and purr and they, the whole pillow and then you're like super comfy. In one of those flips, <clears throat> they actually put me facing down because they wanted to check my, my cervix and they wanted to check mm. everything. And I started to feel really dizzy mm. and really nauseous. Yeah. And uh, Jet's heartbeat started, started to go really yeah. low. Yeah. So, so there was like this, 10 minute window of like a huge scare like they took my mom out of the room they took Dooley out of the room they took the doula out of the mm -hmm. room they brought in more doctors they were getting for like we need to run her to a uh, for a c-section mm -hmm. but he, his heartbeat actually came back higher before I actually recovered like before I actually was like okay I'm not dizzy anymore like so as soon the as position, they, sometimes it happens whenever they don't like one side, they yeah. like the other side better. Yeah. Yeah. So they shifted me back immediately as soon as they saw, they saw the reaction in the monitors and everything. But as soon as they saw that he was well, they were like, she's going to get over it. Like she's going to, she's going to come back. And I, mm. and I came back and then they brought them back to the room and then they checked and they were like, she's ready. Like she's ready to push. And I was like, ready to push <laughs> this baby out. Um, and then I pushed for maybe like 50 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And, and I mean, it wasn't like 50 minutes of hardcore pushing. It's not like in yeah. the movies, like, ah, ah, ah. it's like you push, you wait. Yeah. They clean you up, they move around and then you're like, oh, I feel like I'm going to push again. And then at the end, it just started getting a little bit more intense. And then I was like, yeah. I can't hold the push. I need to push right now. And then the baby came out. Mm. Um, yeah. So, so by that moment, my doula was asleep. <laughs> she was like completely passed out in the cot that they had bring from like Dewey to, to rest who he never rested at all and I don't think he's rested since Jet has born but um <laughs> so Dooley was now right next to me holding my arm and holding one of my legs and my mom was on the she was like front row I see the baby and the reason why she wasn't like here whispering in my ear was because Every time that I pushed, they were like, oh, we see the head. And by like the seventh push or like the sixth push, I was like, your guys are lying. Like, I don't feel that pressure that you guys say. Like, if there was a head, I would at least feel a pressure. Well, I understand. They're probably pain. saying it because you see it a little bit and then it goes back in. So I told my mom, like, you get yourself there and you are never going to lie to me. So tell me the truth. And then I push and she's like, there's hair. 
it's there, <laughs> Howard. Like that is right yeah, there. They go in and out. Finish. Yeah. And then she was like, it, and then then the, the she she wasn't like narrating the whole story. She was like, the shoulders are coming. So get ready. This is the hardest part. And I was like, okay, the shoulders are coming. And then she was like, okay, the shoulders are out. It's the last push, like just right. Woo, woo, woo. And then he came out. And then she was the one. Like she was just narrating the whole thing. She was like, there's placenta, like we need to push the placenta out. And then the nurse would just like tell me the medical terms of everything. Like, mm. this is what's gonna happen, this is what's gonna feel. But my mom was kind of like narrating the whole thing. Wow. And, and that was pretty awesome. Yeah. And for her, she told me like it was oh my it must have been the biggest life. gift ever. Yeah. Yeah, it was the best experience of her life. And then Jet came and it was amazing. That's amazing. And you know what was the most amazing part? That as soon as the baby came out, I had no acid reflux. I had like I went to the room and I told Dooley, like, go to Life Alive, which is uh, like green a juice. Local, <laughs> get me a get me beet juice, get me a green juice, get me like a green wrap, like get me all the green stuff you can find. And I like <laughs> stuffed my face with and it felt so good. Mm. Right? It was over. Like it was over. And that was yeah. That was really eye-opening to understand like the whole like souls and like male hormones mm -hmm. and you know and then when I started um studying Ayurveda like there's even more like the, the elemental constitution of us like yeah. how we're built elementally like that plays a huge role in how we feel when we're pregnant as well so for me now that I know my son who's also a Taurus who was born five <laughs> days after my birthday And now that I understand like about Ayurveda, like he's very fiery. He's just like me. So there was so much freaking so much fire. fire inside I of wonder me. you were so throwing up all the time. Yep. 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 And I was like overheated all the time as well. And how yeah. was, um, were you able to breastfeed? Mm -hmm. So um, he, so he was born. They put him on my belly. And he mm. crawled his way up to my chest. And that was also like, like, what is this gremlin thing happening here? Like, I can't believe it. Like, why would you put him on my belly and not on my chest? And they were like, he's going to make, we need him to find your nipple. And I was like, wait, what? And then that's, that's how, great that's that they what, did that at the hospital, the breast crawl. No, my really experience, good. baby, was amazing. Like, I, you I, give me labor any day of the week. But don't give me pregnancy. <laughs> like I'll push a baby out of my vagina any day, any Wednesday, if you want. But the pregnancy, man, the pregnancy is what keeps, you know, like. But anyways, so he finds a nipple, and he immediately latches. But the, so he immediately latches, and then he plays around, whatever, whatever. He, his eyes were still closed. Then we go to the room and then the doctors were like, just, he's going to stay in your room, obviously, but just rest for the next 24 hours because he's like, you're going to be full of adrenaline and he is actually super tired and he's well fed. He comes from the belly well fed. So he doesn't need milk right now, unless he like starts crying. <clears throat> I obviously couldn't sleep. I was like super in a high. It was weird. It was like that Christmas feeling when you're young, right? Like this, yeah. like, yeah. And then I would try to sleep and then I would wake up and I was <laughs> like, oh my God, he's right here. Yeah, it's kind of hard to sleep after you've done the biggest thing you're ever going to do. Yes, exactly. Even so, though I have to say that in natural birth, you know, the, the, I feel like the difference of, of see, experiencing both like as a doula, whenever a woman gives birth like fully naturally, there's an exhaustion that's completely different from, from, the, from having had the epidural. And um, so there's like this kind of like, just re like release of just like oh the baby's here to and they sleep uh-huh yeah so it's a very different I feel like it's a different um yeah it's definitely a different after effect mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. notice I mm -hmm. had the same experience as you I was like all right what's next <laughs> exactly but the, but it's also very weird like the the side effect of like the epidural after you give birth you're like okay legs wake yeah. up like I don't want to have this feeling so that was kind of weird and to be honest like if I get pregnant again if um I would like try to do as much as labor as I can at home 
just yeah. so when I reached the hospital, they're like, oh, you're too late. You can't have an epidural. You have to push. Because the after effect of the epidural was was what I didn't like. It was like, mm. oh, like this is where you feel the medicine. Like yeah. this is where you feel like that thing that's yeah. not normal for the yeah. body to yeah. be feeling it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, so yeah, tell like, me a little bit, um, tell me a little bit, like, let's go over briefly um, over just that, that, that part of like, how did you deal with that immediate postpartum? T- the, well, immediate quote unquote, mm-hmm. but like those mm-hmm. initial six weeks of, mm-hmm. of that digesting the process and digesting the meds and adjusting and mm-hmm. all of that. Mm-hmm. So there was a, so even going a little bit back, like regarding lactation, like, so he latched and then 24 hours or like maybe 16 hours later, he wasn't latching properly. And so they were like, squeeze your boob and just try to get a couple of drops out because the colostrum is it called? Mm-hmm. Colostro? Yeah. Um, they were like, that's going to feed, that's going to feed jet enough, whatever, whatever. But if in your first pediatric appointment, he's still not latching properly, like you're going to need a lactation consultant. And I was like, give me the lactation consultant right now. Like, why do I, why do we have to wait? Like, why can't we do it properly right now? So, so I did, I did that. So by the time we went to the first pediatric appointment, the doctor noticed that he had a little bit of tongue tie. Um, so she brought in a lactation consultant anyways, but we were already trained. He was already latching properly. So as you can see, like I am a very like organized, like foreseen person. And I'm like, uh-huh. why don't we just get it over with? So that really helped in my postpartum mm. thing. Like, because I had a lot of plans, but in those plans, I also had like, oh, and by week, no, 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 I'm going to be like doing my practice mm. again. And by week, that, that, that. so in those plans, I was also putting a lot of pressure on myself Mm. and to be honest if I have another kid I would stay 40 days in bed like Mm. I would like I would do it super differently even though I had my mom and I had Dooley around um I had so much help like I didn't change a diaper until until Dooley went back to school after summer break like Mm. that was like three months old when I changed his first diaper Mm -hmm. so I had a lot of help but again like my personality is one of like get up go and do, do things you know I wanted to go out and walk, take a walk in the park we were coming from a rough winter like I just wanted to be out and about and just you know like start feeling like my body felt back to normal mm. so I think I pushed myself a little bit too much I don't think I gave myself the nourishment that I required and I think that I do have a lot of lingering effects of that mm. to be honest um did that manifest of, in your in your physical body or like yes. in you getting sick yes. more often like how did it manifest so mostly it manifested in my physical part, body more than it did in my, in my like subtle body like in my mind okay. um I have a lot of like I, I'm not gonna say like pelvic floor issues because I've worked a lot on that but I mm-hmm. I think I peed my pants until like it last year right like mm-hmm. every time that I cough or sneeze um I had an anal fissure that okay. didn't come from the birth and that didn't come from that first poop after you give birth. It didn't mm-hmm. come from that. It came from like not giving myself the oil, the nourishment, mm-hmm. the warmth that I needed. So when we talk about like birth in Ayurveda and you know about this, it's like you're coming from like this huge belly full of like fluids and like mucus and a body and like heat creating here. And then you give Mm. birth and you have like this, you still have a belly, but you have this hollow belly, this Mm -hmm. flabby belly. And your body is getting rid of all the nutrients, of all the extra nourishment, of all the extra blood, of all of that. And it starts to get depleted. Mm -hmm. And the the natural thing to do, in in, meaning, and by natural, I mean like if you're 100% connected to that and you understand it or or you live in a village and you have this tribe of women (laughs) who like take care of you, right? Like the natural way of that would be to get like super nourished. Like for example, in Korea, they give you like, they, you have an option. You either move to your, to your mother-in-law's or to your mother's home where they nourish you for 40 days. Or if you don't have that relationship with your mom or your mother-in-law, there's special hotels where you like check yourself in, like you go from the hospital to the hotel, like toot, wow. toot, directly with your newborn and they take care of you a hundred percent. They do everything wow. you get. I, twice a day, you get massages, 
you have like wow. patient consultants, you get food. Yeah, it's super expensive, but they believe in it. It's available. Yeah. And that's what's important, right? We'll figure we'll we'll figure out the financial the financial part later for for the society, for mm -hmm. you know, for everyone who needs it. But, but it's the, there. just acknowledging that the woman yeah. needs this. Not that the woman needs to like get up and go and like yeah. fit in your size two or four jeans immediately. Like that's just not how it rolls, yeah. right? So in that sense, I didn't give myself that warmth. And we were coming from winter. So, so all of that winter stagnation was also melting away with the rise of the temperature, right? All of that extra fat that your body retains to sustain yourself from the cold, all of that was also melting. So my whole body was like releasing so many things. But by like the third week postpartum, I was dry. I was completely mm. dry. So I experienced an anal fissure. And then... Mm. It was super freaking painful. I ended up in surgery for that, which now that I think about it, I could have figured it out ayurvedically, but that's okay. I, that's okay. <laughs> now I know. Um, and now I can help other women who go through that to not go into surgery. But there's just so many like lingering things. Like my practice is not how it used to be. And I don't, I don't feel like I want it to be, right? Like I don't feel like I want to put my leg behind my head anymore. Like just my mind is so tired from being a mom that I kind of want to go into it more easier yeah being on my mat right like no one pressuring me there's no need to jump there's no need to do any of that like I do it Absolutely. by myself I sometimes do it in my pjs and that's fine right <laughs> so there's yeah so 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 there's that so I have so a lot you, of like I, I, it's really nice to hear this I feel like this is a, there's been a lot of interviews but this is the first time there's this uh focus on the postpartum and I think it's so important that yeah that we are sheltered and that we do have a plan in place because there's so many changes you know like we spend so much time taking care of ourselves during pregnancy and making plans for labor and birth but rarely do we think about the mm -hmm. aftermath and there's a lot of picking up and a lot less time um, yeah so it's definitely yeah. I'm so glad you share this um yeah with for me it was a huge lesson like it it, yeah. it was such a huge lesson that I actually created a postpartum kit with my friend my friend Aurora from Panama mm -hmm. um, we created this postpartum kit where we have like we have a recipe book we have we even have like a part of that where, where you you talk about all of this to your partner so your partner can tune in yeah so they don't expect you to get up and, and go yeah. um so so yeah there's like soft yoga and like you know, like reviving your pelvic floor and like how to like, things are different in your yeah, body after you give birth. And I really feel like people shouldn't expect to be who you were before. You are not who you were yeah. before. You're a mom now. Yeah. And that means that, and, and, and you're a mom in a physical realm and in a subtle realm, right? Right. Like your mind is now divided with someone else that you have to take care of, right? So so there, yeah Absolutely. so postpartum is a huge 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 yeah. thing and I, I told Aurora like I'm so happy she's pregnant now because I told her like if I get pregnant I want you to like move here to Cambridge for 40 days and do everything for me and she was like I would totally do it so now I have to wait until she gives birth so she goes through her process and then I'll bring her home but yeah so so, so tell yeah, me so before we wrap it up I want to hear a little bit about um yeah just what it was like for you to go back I know you said at the beginning of the call that you feel like now after well after now it's been four years but after three years is really when you started to feel like you were yourself again so just if you can I know it's hard to talk about something like this briefly but if you could just share what you think is most important in terms of um, with this change of mm -hmm. you know who we are now as a mother how did it feel for you to come back to some sort of work routine or like you know fitting back into what you think you were going to be afterwards but here you are with this new identity how was that transition for you or what would you want another to know so so let's so considering that I that the baby wasn't planned and that I left my business in Panama I went through I went through a lot of grief mm. regarding my 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 professional life yeah, I'm I went sure through a lot of grief that. because I left my business there. Two years later, I actually had to like sell a part, you know, close the other, like I had to figure things out. And yes, there was just so much like 
and I went to therapy for this and I, and, and, and it was a huge subject with, with Julie, my husband, because he was like, just let it go. Just let it go. Just let it go. I would, it would rise up in me a lot. Mm -hmm. It would rise with like, sometimes even like some kind of resentment against him because he got into school and we had mm -hmm. to leave Panama. Sometimes it would rise up in like resentment, like, like, yeah, just like random things. To be honest, I never had the resentment towards Jet. It was, it wasn't never like, because really like the moment I, I gave birth to that child, like I've loved him every single minute. Like he's amazing. <laughs> he's beautiful. Yeah. He's amazing. He's so freaking cool. Like he, he, it's not his fault. <laughs> so, so I knew that it, but it, it, it came out with a lot of resentment towards Julie. Yeah. To be honest. I was like, why did you take us out of Panama? Because after he finished school, he decided to find a job here. In the meantime, he got a, he wanted to apply to a green card, which took him three years to get it, even though we were married because it was the whole Trump era. And, and in that window, we, Jet got diagnosed as well with mm. the condition on his leg. So all of these factors were like, you can't leave the Boston area. I couldn't leave Boston Children's. I couldn't leave Massachusetts Health Insurance. It's free for him. I couldn't leave my husband who was applying for a green card. But at the same time, I was leaving everything in Panama. I was shutting everything down. I had told my clients like there was, this was pre pandemic. So no one was on Zoom. No one wanted online classes. No one wanted right. any of that, right? So I was like, what the hell am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. And and I kept like blaming Julia. I was like, right? I've been working since I'm 18 and now I'm here and I'm a stay-at-home <laughs> mom and I hate it. <laughs> so I went back to school and that's how I got into okay. the Boston Ayurveda school. And okay. that's, I think it's something really important to understand, like, listen to that calling. Is it really mm -hmm. that you have to go back to an eight to five or is it that you know, now know new information that you need to like, kind of like you, it, it happened to you too. You went into doula mode. Yeah. I mean, I had a, ther well, he's a therapist slash psychic slash acupuncturist. Um, his name is Abdi Asadi. And I, I was working with him at the time and he had told me, he was like, I think it was shortly after I gave birth I was again like you in this crisis of like nothing nothing fits not in terms of clothes but like nothing mm -hmm. of what I was makes sense anymore in my spirit the way I was doing it and yet what well, how am I going to make money and he was like look babies come with their own plans for you and just allow yourself to listen and be mm -hmm. fearless about following through because it's going to be it can only be better than what you had and it's mm -hmm. so true you know like Yes, it takes time to accept because that's what we know. You know, we're not going to mm -hmm. be like, all right, peace, something better is coming. Bring it on. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. it's hard to accept it's and hard. to let it in and to trust and to, you know, it's hard. To, yeah. all of it. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And for you, it must have been even harder. You were a pandemic baby. Yeah, right? that was on so, top. That's, yeah, that was another yeah. layer of it. But on one yeah, side, so, honestly, I think it was also a blessing in disguise because like you, I wasn't, you know, I planned my pregnancy, but I wasn't planning on being a stay at home mom, but it's been so nice to spend this time home. So, you know, like everything has the yeah. double edged sword, I feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so um, let's go back to one second. We have to wrap it up soon, but I, I mm -hmm. just want to, so you, do you feel like now four years later, you've kind of embraced this new South, this new journey do you feel like when you look back you're like oh it makes sense and yes how is it for you okay yes definitely so so I decided so I I had I had plans that I wanted to go back to work after I finished my studies and all of that and I started doing a couple of things online like I started getting a couple of clients I would travel back and forth from Panama to take jet to see my parents and then I would reach out and be like hey like I know I'm not here but listen I'm doing this Ayurveda thing now and I feel like you know, I started doing workshops when I went to Panama and things like that. <clears throat> but I think that as time goes by and as your baby starts growing and starts getting more independent, like right now, Jed is in school and things like that. You start noticing that you have a little bit more time on your hands, yeah. even if you're working, even if like I'm working full time and I'm like my schedule is full. You, you kind of start getting, a, you kind of start getting your life back right? Mm -hmm. Like you start getting like yesterday I went for a wax. It was like, like what? <laughs> like like on, a, on a Wednesday? Like how did that happen? Right? So 
when you start getting your life back, you, you also start making more room in your mind. Mm -hmm. And it sounds contradictory because you no, it makes say, total sense from this point. You would say like, right? Like you would say like, oh, but if you're, yeah. you've got more time, like you're more busy and you're doing more stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but I also have more time to like plan his meals, plan his lunch boxes. Now he has to go with like a full meal for, for school or like, before he even comes back from school, I already have out like what he's going to wear the next day and things like that just help me. And again, like I'm super routine. I'm super organized. Like I have that in me, but I've, I've learned how to use it for me, not against yeah. me. And I've learned how to communicate and manifest that this is who I am. My husband is the complete opposite. Like I teach twice a week um, in, in the studio, in the mornings, like outside of the home. And I leave the lunchbox ready. The, the socks, the, the brace, the shoes, the stroller, everything in the stroller. And I still get a call like, Jet doesn't want to get ready. Can you please hurry so you can take him to school? Right? But now, like, if he would have told me that when he was a baby and I was like, you know, going through all of these things and he was like, oh, you handle because I can't, be, you know, like daddy mode yeah. when they get into that, I would have gotten super pissed. But now I'm like, hey, babe, you know what? Don't worry. I totally handle this. I <laughs> got this, right? Like, I've got this. You go. And then I come back from like dropping him in school, like kitchen is a mess. And I found Dooley here meditating with his eyes closed. <laughs> okay. But inside of me, nothing got startled. Nothing got startled. Because one, he's the one who has to go to work from eight to five to a place. I stay and work, work from home. I'm the one who has her own schedule. I, but I built this life for myself. Mm. And I made plans for this to happen. And in those plans, I sacrificed many things. Like he's going to Panama on Saturday. Jet and I are not going. Like mm. life is different now. Like now he goes to school now. Like my life is here now. And coming to terms with who you are now with a little percentage of who you were before mm. is like the perfect combo, right? Like it's, it's like, you still have yourself there who really laughs with her friends and enjoys like a glass of wine, but you also have the mommy who brings out the clothes yeah. and makes sure that the menu is set for the rest of the week and that the groceries are made, da, 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 you know, all of that. And then I just press his button when I feel like there's a vacuum that needs to be like, run around the house or there when there's like a mattress that needs to be turned over then I just press his buttons and get get him to do that so right. whether you have a partner or not it's about delegating it's about organization for me that's what works and that's how I feel yeah. like I get shit done honestly I love that and yeah so yeah those are my two cents but I don't know my son is four and a half so it's different when you have a newborn. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I feel like each phase comes with its challenges. You know, now I look back and I'm like, oh, I can't believe I didn't just lay on the couch until he was eight months. <laughs> right. When they tell I you can't to, believe like, I just didn't put him sleeps. in a chair instead of being like, here's a black and white picture. Look at it because it's going to help your brain. <laughs> totally. Like, no, <laughs> lay down and look at the wall. <laughs> No, or like I would, when, when I, so I did sleep training for Jet when he was like five months old. I needed the help. And, and to be honest, he never cried. It was super easy. But I remember when I started, when I was in the process of doing it and he would, he would just start taking his like super long naps. I should have been sleeping. I was on Instagram mm -hmm. posting things about like my job. And that mm -hmm. sucked. <laughs> because I, yeah, I feel like there needs to business. be a better balance of, <laughs> I think maybe it's just having yeah. a, a uh, better outlook of yeah. or better understanding of like what each phase comes with and how much time you should really set aside for yourself and how much and I yeah and that, work that's and why these that stuff. these stories are so wonderful for yeah. that yeah because we can create a community and I can like text you and be like you know like I'm, I'm going crazy and you can text me back and be like it's totally normal go crazy throw shit around Right? right. And then we can be like, oh, okay, everything is good again. Family's back at home and everything is okay. Yeah. We go through that, but we need a community. We need, yeah, we need people who are in tune with us, who yeah, will understand, absolutely. who will not judge us for whatever we want yeah. to do. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so thank with you for that, holding I'll that space out. for everyone. No, thank you for being part of it. I'm so grateful for all of you that have joined in on this. So if somebody wants to reach out to you, how will they best find you? And I'll put it in the YouTube description as okay. well but just so you there it's on video as well 
How can they find so you? So I have my website, auravermudez.com. Everything is in Spanish because again, I tailor for the Spanish speaking community, but but of course I, I, I do clients in English. Um, I also just started, um, I'm an official Ayurvedic health counselor under the Ayurvedic Living Institute, which is Kate's new baby, Kate O'Donnell's new baby. And I'm super, 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 super happy for that. Thank you. So you can also find me there if you go through, through her website. Um, and then you can find me through Instagram, which is at Tripping Yoga. I'm not the most posting person in the world but you'll find valuable information in there like I, I share tips and I do things like that and um so yeah you can reach me I that. think you're very valuable on Instagram I love your post <laughs> thank you thank you I hate all posting right. on Instagram, but I try I know I know <laughs> right there with you Aura thank you so much for being here thank with you. us today I'm really grateful for everything you've shared thank you thank you